I hope everyone is having a nice Friday afternoon. I've got some free time today. I wanted to take my new little uh, improvised ball marker for a spin with the uh, passing sticks and get out some receivers and, and, and see how we fare with this. Um, as viewers know, I've moved the motor into the far corner of the field to try to mitigate the hot spots. And I've also gone ahead and done this again. This is another troubleshooting step I've done in the past. I've put the, uh, uh, these beneath the uh, right side of the field here because, you know, the legs are longer on the left side, resulting in a tilt in the angle of the field. So the, this helps mitigate that just a little bit by, you know, just putting uh, these beneath the legs here on the right side. Um, that, that's, that's more or less to try to even out the speeds headed from one direction to the other. It, it, it's still pretty, you know, pretty hot-headed this way, very slow-headed this way. Uh, hopefully this will even that out and <laughs> it will end up with you pretty slow both ways. Uh, that's kind of uh, the best compromise I can come up with right now. But let's just jump into this. Uh, we're going to start with um, uh, number 14 on the Steelers. Now, I think this is Lynn Swan, but that's not his number. Um, I don't have my EFHL book out with all the, uh, the names on it. We're not going to worry about it. Um, and I'll just try this from different angles here now. I should probably also get out some opponents, you know, some defensive backs, and, you know, give them a shot to intercept some of these passes. Um, let's just see how we fare here. Now, typically, you know, to make this even slightly challenging with such a large ball marker, we need to uh, you know, do something like that. But it will depend on where the quarterback's throwing it from more than anything. Uh, that shouldn't be much of a challenge, should it? Nope. Okay. Let's roll with some defensive pressure on a short pass. I'm going to try several different receivers here. Uh, the further we get away from the player, the more likely that the uh, the pass will be incomplete. That's the essence of passing sticks right there. And uh, with such a large target, though, it's still pretty easy to complete your passes. But, like I said in the previous video, it's also easier for the opponents to intercept them. So move on to a medium yardage pass. I'm just trying some different angles here, folks. We're also kind of testing out the, uh, the field here. I'll continue to make this as challenging as possible. This uh, base has a natural drift to the right in it, so that could come into play. Let's see. Oh, still hit it. All right, now we'll go with a uh, white stick with defensive pressure. Get some different angles here. Okay. Oh, he's he skirted it, but I don't think he hit it with the uh, front of his base. I would roll a twenty-sided dice to do an ability check in that case, since I'm not exactly sure whether he hit it or not. Um, of course, we could take all the question out of it if the. Uh, if the ball was angled this way, I mean, this is going to be much easier because it's a much larger target. Might miss it, though. We'll just have to see. Oh, he did. He, 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 he skirted to the right of it. So, in anticipation of something like that happening at this angle, you'll just go ahead and place the ball marker slightly to the left, well, to his right, and see what happens. Yep, spot on. Um, now we'll go for a long yardage pass. Let's you know, do something like this. In fact, let's take it right through the middle of the field here. This is the, the gully, you know. This is where the most shenanigans could happen. Uh, let's just go ahead and put the ball at a weird angle. Say the quarterback's over No, he wouldn't be over there, would he? <laughs> okay, let's say the quarterback is over here, like so. Uh, he may miss this because of the orientation. Let's find out. No, he hit it. Okay. And now, uh, a blue stick with defensive pressure. This is, uh, other than a Hail Mary pass, this is the most challenging pass. Uh, let's make this as challenging as possible. Uh, skirted right by it. Okay. So it is still possible not to make completions even with such a large ball marker. Um, I know this is a, I know this figure does drift to the right, so what I'll do, in fact, I'll just 
we'll do something like this. Actually, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to anticipate that. That drift to the right. This is where the, the math comes into these uh, passing sticks. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Still possible to catch a pass that long, but also very possible for your opponents to uh, catch a pass that long. All right, let's move on to, uh, I don't know, uh, here. Let me show you up close here. Uh, you haven't seen the decals on any of these figures yet. Julian Edelman. Those look really nice. Tell you what, El Toro did a great job matching up the uh, blue beneath that decal with the uh, uniform blue. You can't even see the seam on a lot of these. That's real. That's real. That's real cool. Uh, all right. Let's just. Uh, well, first, before we even do that, I want to make sure he's running all right. I haven't run this one in quite a while. I mean, that's all relative, isn't it? He won't run as well as we've seen in previous videos because I've crippled the board here to try to get a better performance out of it. He seems to be drifting to the right, even though I have him scooted over to the right as well. So let's put him closer to the center of his base. Yeah, that's genuinely probably as good as it's going to get, folks. Um, I can't do any better than that. All right, let's uh, let's assume that his passes are all going to be straight on then. That's going to be a hard pass to not make. A lot would have to go wrong to miss a short yardage pass like that. Um, now we'll put some defensive pressure on the quarterback. I'm still going to continue to make this as challenging as possible. Missed it! See? See? Okay, let's try that again. Uh, so he uh, went to the right of it a little bit, so... Let's see if this time I can compensate for that. I moved the figure just a little bit. Uh, there we go. Yep, that was definitely a completion. Uh, let's do some fade routes along the sideline. A lot can go wrong over here because on my field, the sidelines are almost a centimeter higher than the middle of the field because of this crappy sheet metal they installed on this thing. Okay. Oh, let's uh, go with a medium yardage pass and uh, see what happens y'all again if he's trending to the right now we might put the ball marker a little to the right see if we can compensate yep he hit it okay let's send him back the other way I hope yeah you should be able to see that but we'll put him under defensive pressure it's gonna make it a little more challenging and I'm just going to assume at th this close to the sideline, he's either going out of bounds, or uh, he's not. So, there we go. I will say it is much easier to manipulate this larger uh, ball marker than it is that little map magnet. Got it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing, though, for uh, just a little added experiment here. Uh, we'll just go ahead and put him under defensive pressure if we didn't already. I can't remember and we're going to use the original method I used for this, uh, this tiny ball marker, this tiny map magnet. And see if we can hit that. The problem with this little thing is that it, it often was knocking down the receivers, tipping them over. But let's see if I can complete that pass that close to the sideline over on what used to be the hot spot. And I missed it. Okay. So that does make a difference the size of the target, obviously. Uh, let's try again. Let's try to account for that deviation in the route, which I can't begin to explain. I mean, uh, he's running okay in midfield, but... Okay, he, he grazed it. The front of base to the ball marker is all you need for a completion, folks, in my rule set. Uh, now we'll go for a long pass headed this direction. I'm going to start him right at midfield because this is the... And I'm going to send him out this way, straight on. This would be a pretty good demonstration. This would, you know, how often does a receiver run straight down the 50-yard line? But anyway, the ball would be at a different angle than this normally. But this is all just, you know, 
experimentation here. That time, he skirted to the left of it, so. All right, I'm, let's just eyeball it. He was right there. That time he hit it. Well, that time I didn't set him up straight on the line. I, but this time, let's see. Yep, he missed it. Okay, so I'm still going to have to try to... It is still possible to miss these. Um, so we, we, we're, there's not going to be a 100% completion rate. Let me line it up again now that I know that he, for whatever reason, he drifting to the left headed this direction. And try to compensate for it. And I'll still try to make it challenging by putting the ball head on like that. Ooh. Pretty sure he hit that. I mean, he, he it, it deflected him, but did he hit it with the front of his base? That's the real question here. You can see this time he went straight as an arrow. There's board inconsistency rather than base inconsistency. All right, we'll put it back on the... Uh, there. Let's see if I can hit it this time. Yep. And, I mean, you know it's a completion when it stops his forward progress. All right. So, uh, now we'll do one more just with a defensive pressure. Let's put it at a, at a strength. Let's, here. Let's uh, assume the quarterback is back here. And he's throwing down the sideline here. But... You know, let's assume he's in the middle of the field, so I'm going to angle the ball like this. But let's, well, no, let's just leave it as is and see what happens. Did I just deflect the figure? Damn. Looks like I might have. Well, yeah. Okay, so what we know is that this figure is drifting to the right, to the base, I should say. So we'll do the same thing, uh, except, you know, we're going to try to compensate for that. By putting the ball marker, let's, something like that. What do you think? Now let's see if he can complete the pass here. Yeah, okay. So it's not impossible. It still is tricky sometimes. And you can still miss these. Um, this ball marker is not that much larger than the, uh, uh, the one Brian Nutt uses for his uh, passing. It's not that much larger than the buzz ball ball marker. And presumably, it's not that much larger than a tutor ball marker. So I think we'll be all right with this. Uh, might have more completions and more interceptions than normal. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put together some scenarios here. Let's try a couple more figures. Um, what do we got? Uh, let's dip into... Uh, Some of these figures here. Uh, number 81 on the Bengals. And number 21 on the Cowboys. And we'll, uh, so this is a cornerback. And this is a wide receiver. And we'll just you know, try a couple different things here and see what happens. So let's assume, okay, we've got, uh, this is going to be man coverage. Well, well, let's put it down this, this way. Yes, very good. It's going to be man coverage. Here's the, the snap. And we've got to uh, uh, give 81 on the Bengals the inside route. It's highly likely he's going to outrun number 21. We'll just have to see. And uh, here's the read. Yeah, okay. Now uh, we'll do all our pivots here. And, uh, you know, he should be okay. Uh, let's assume quarterback is back here on the, the goal line. So yeah, we're looking at a long pass. Quarterback is not under defensive pressure. And, you know, based on how this uh, figure is oriented on the uh, base right now, it looks like he might actually drift a little to the right. So we'll try to uh, account for that by doing this. There we go. That may be too much. We'll just have to see. So here's the pass. Intercepted. So there you go, folks. It is easily possible for with such a large ball marker to get picked off. And, uh, well, let's see. So if he intercepted, let's pivot him, and let's see if 81 can catch it. This is just, I, I want to check speeds here, folks. Yeah, I'm going to try to.
do the math here and try to catch him before he gets out of range. I'd roll the dice there, and if he actually made contact with the base, that's a fumble, uh, uh, front to rear. Uh, but let's just assume that the uh, defense used a bonus defensive stoppage. I'm going to stay right behind him and see if I can catch up with him. No. Oh, he went by him. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we can keep this interesting. All right. So he actually looped pretty hard to the right in that scenario. I want to I wanna try the same thing again. Uh, probably using the same kind of path. All right. Except this time, uh, we won't be doing man coverage so much. At least it won't be a bump and run. So here's the snap. Okay. So now instead of any sort of inside outside route, we're just going to do this. 21 seems to be running faster than 81, so let's see. Okay. Now, he's going to pull in this way for um, a hook route or a curl route. And 21 is going to come back around like so. That may not be a good idea there. More like that. Otherwise, it might be pass interference. So, uh, again, we'll assume a long pass. And we'll assume defensive pressure. You know what? He should have cut this. And that's something you're going to have to tr train yourself to do to, to figure this out. Now, he's he's pulling hard to the right. So, we'll uh, angle the ball to the right. We'll assume the quarterback was near midfield right up there. Okay. Now, uh, looks to me like they both have a beat on this pass. So here we go. <laughs> Incomplete. I uh, didn't. The, I just didn't do the math well enough, and you're going to run into this. Let's uh, instead of running downfield over and over again, let's just try some different scenarios here. Let's let's just put the ball mark in, in various places and see what happens. Looks like either one of them might have a chance for this ball. Wouldn't you agree? Let's see. That time is an interception. Um, so we'll put the ball on the 50. Now, this, now a scenario like this comes down to whoever has the faster base, folks. Again, that time it was definitely the Cowboys again. Um, let's look at his prongs on number 81 here. This is supposed to be a much faster base than that. Um, very quickly, let's just do a little foot race. Looks like I might just have a faster uh, running back there. You know, frankly, I begin to question what's wrong with this base. It was fine when we uh, evaluated it, so let's try again. But then again, since I tucked the, co the motor over in the corner, we're going to get different behaviors. So. I do see that the rear prong is much shorter than the front prong, which means I had to trim the rear prong with clippers. Uh, that could have something to do with this. I am going to go ahead and do a little mini evaluation here. Nothing, nothing serious. Okay, yeah, he is pulling to the right, so let's scoot him over to the left to try to correct that. I overcorrected. Trying to find a compromise in the middle. I feel like I'm at the whims of the uh, terrible game board right now, but that's okay. That's very slow. Let's try another foot race here. Of course, the motor's not here to give whoever's on this side the, the edge, but let's see. <laughs> okay, so there's still a little randomness in play here. That time he... Uh, he made it, he won the foot race, but let's try another um, um, pass where he has the inside route. Let's assume it's a pretty long pass. Um, let's see what happens now. This will be incidental contact, this is, unless, you know, he, unless uh, the Cowboys uh, running back, or cornerback, just, uh, you know, completely deflects him from catching the ball here. Okay, good catch, good reception. And he's in a position now to pick up a few yards. But let's see how he fares. If he can outrun him, you know. Let's see. Nope. Oh, that was a good tackle. Okay. You know, everything still works. So, uh, okay. Let's try a couple different figures now. Um, 
bear with me a moment while I do some bookkeeping over here in my storage container. Keep things organized. So if you slack on that, it can, it can get away from you. Uh, we'll use number eight on the Cardinals as a cornerback. And we'll use uh, number 80 on the Vikings as a running back, or as a uh, wide receiver. And both away team uniforms, but, you know, we'll, we'll get over that. Okay, let's get them a little closer to the numerals rather than the sideline. Let's see what we can do. Here's the snap. Ooh, bump and run. Um, uh, the Vikings helmet is closer to midfield, so we flip him around, but he's got a, a, a speed edge, it looks like, or a distance edge, so. Here's the read. Oh, he broke away. Easy, easy pass, at least it should be. He's going to cut into midfield. We'll say it's a long pass with defensive pressure. And uh, Pretty tough pass, folks. But we'll make it a little easy by putting the ball like this. But, you know, there's still a chance for an interception from the uh, defensive back there. Let's see. They both missed it. Now I begin to wonder if the magnet in that is deflecting them. Uh, by deflecting them, I simply mean deadening the field in that spot. Um, kind of like a, a reverse ripple in a, in a pond or something. Or maybe they just both flip and missed it. I don't know. Let's set up that scenario again. Let's make it a little more interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see. He went to... Okay, so let's... There. And there. All right. I don't know what's going to happen here. Well, not only did he catch the ball, but that's pass interference on the defense. So uh, I don't think he touched the ball first. Um, we can set that up again. We'll try to just try a couple of different angles here. Just make it, you know, sort of. It, it's not really, but let's see. Okay, easy uh, completion there. So this will work, I think. I'm not going to go back and do an evaluation on all these bases. You know, I warm them up before a game and try to adjust prongs as need be and then go from there. Uh, all right, let's set up another. Um, let's give the defense the inside route. Here, we'll get about the 40. There we go. And uh, That was, you know, right after the snap. Now let's just do the read. Oh, oh, nice pressure there. But they, you know, he, he can't impede progress, so. Very dangerous pass. So what we're going to do is. Ooh, this is an immensely dangerous pass. Uh, so we're going to try to limit, you know, it may be incomplete. But I'm going to put it right here near the sideline, like so. Uh, let's see what happens. He may, if he, if he. At this point, if he knocks him out of bounds, if the Cardinals knocks the Vikings out of bounds, that's a uh, pass interference. He didn't. He's still in bounds, and he made the, uh, gosh, that's that simulates, you know, hand slapping downfield. Um, how would you guys call that? Would you call that pass interference? It could go either way because they were both making contact with each other. Roll dice, do an ability check to see if someone was penalized there. Uh, I'm keen to give that to number eight. For an, uh, for an interception. It was a good, it was a good catch, um, but was it clean? I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that. Or just roll dice and, and get on with the game. Let's uh, assume that number 80 here is a tight end. He's not. And let's assume he gets the inside route, but let's assume they're not actually touching each other. And it's a short pass. Well, no, we'll say a medium pass. And, uh... Oh, he missed it! See what I mean? It's like... All right, let's reverse the scenario and see if the same thing happens, then something's amiss here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so yeah, it was just the, the you know, the, the bins, uh, the deviations in the base. And, uh, you know, I can solve some of that to a point, but I don't really think I can solve it every direction on this game board because, folks, this is not a flat surface. This is a bowl. Oops, I almost knocked the goalpost off again. These things are such a liability. Um, it's you know it's a it's a half pipe headed this direction and it's a bowl headed this direction. So um, 
And I have tried, in fact, I can do it right now, folks. Uh, I can do this. There, well, well, to a point. That's how loose the sheet metal is. That's not supposed to happen right there. Uh, but now we've got it sort of bowed up. Now it's a reverse problem. Now we've got a hill. The whole thing is on a hill. And uh, the motor may or may not cause it to immediately jump back down. So let's, uh, well, first of all, before we do any of that, let's just see how these bases perform. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to get a big dead spot right here. Let's see. Something, see how I just cannot predict what these things are going to do? I don't like that. Now that uh, that's, that bothers me because I spent so many months evaluating bases to make sure that they did what I want to do. That's a better result. After I had adjusted his prongs or his uh, position a little bit. I just don't like how my wideouts are suddenly so much slower than the running backs because, you know, when I crafted these, they were much faster, which is why they were put on wide receivers. Let's try again. Slow foot race. See what happens. Okay, that's... Well, he caught the pass. <laughs> I forgot the ball marker was there. All right, let's try it the other direction. So gone, folks, are the days of really nice, fast bases running down the field. Not possible with this configuration. So you see, I got this one running well this way, but now it's it's not running well the other way. Let's just go ahead and... Oh, it's already sunk back down. Probably the moment I engaged the motor, it sunk back down. So, oh well. That's better. Feel like I'm learning much right now. I'm just I'm just playing with the uh, figures here, folks. That's basically what I'm doing right now. Okay. Oh, it's still pretty close, and I dig that. Um, maybe just have to look at their prongs a little bit and make sure they're all right. All right. Uh, here's an, this is not a bump and run scenario, but. Here's the uh, read. Oh, easy, easy. Quarterback doesn't have to do anything, but let's put him under defensive pressure. And, uh, gosh, I don't know what his base is going to do. Let's assume he's going to pull to the right. He might not. I might just, let's assume the quarterback is over here somewhere and the ball is coming in like this. Okay? And I moved the figure just a little bit. So let's put him back where he was. The cornerback is out of this. I mean, he can only hope to try to close the gap and, and make a tackle. So here we go. Complete. Let's go ahead and let him do his pivot. Hey, this is looking good for him. Uh, here's the defensive bump of the board. Sort of forgot about that. Now it's a foot race to the end zone. Can the cornerback catch him? I don't think he can. Touchdown. Okay. This works. It still works. It's not ideal. It's not... It's not uh, certainly it's not going to be tournament level play, and I apologize for that. But well, I mean, uh, I think we'll be okay with this ball marker. Uh, you are going to get a lot of completions certainly, but you're also going to get a lot of interceptions if you're not careful. So um, let's keep that in mind. All right. Well, I appreciate you uh, watching this one, folks. This was just me kind of screwing around today. Next task is to apply some decals to the Detroit Lions. And that will be the, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. The 11th team with decals on them now. So, you know, about a third of the way through putting the decals on all these. That's front and rear jersey numbers. The shoulders decals will have to wait. The uh, shoulder numbers, as will the face masks. But, eh, I like this little ball marker. It was a... Uh, I just happened to, you know, I was I was going through uh, Walmart and saw the uh, little button was back in the sewing department. I said, yes, yes, I can make a ball marker out of these. And sure enough, I have, so that'll be all right. Uh, meanwhile, I'll need to get my uh, um, stationary felts back out to make sure that they're not covered in fuzz or anything. That would uh, be detrimental for, for gameplay. And uh, I leave those in a container, you know. Make sure that they're not all stuck together in a clump. You know how felt can stick to itself. And uh, make sure that the, 
with this configuration, those will continue to be stationary, and I'm almost positive they will. Uh, but beyond that, once I get the decals applied to all these teams, uh, frankly, there's nothing stopping me from beginning the uh, preseason. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing some little strength evaluations. Uh, can still do those on this board, no matter how crippled it is. And uh, I don't know when I'll start the gameplay, folks. I don't know when I'll start the preseason, but surely before the actual NFL preseason begins. We'll just have to see. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great weekend. See you soon.